第十三对演讲的题目是 Number Five， 计时开始。To put it simple, under the new southbound policy, Taiwan has established broader and closer relationship with 16 target nations. The aim is not to publicize a political status, but to reinforce bilateral or multilateral collaboration. Besides economics and trade. It deepens the friendly ties in more comprehensive ways, like people-to-people -people exchanges, resource sharing, and regional connectivity. It is substantial to diversify cooperation with these economically promising nations. Now, allow Jasper to elaborate this more. Jasper. Thank you, Grace. Yes, since the launch. Taiwan official authorities have organized many an expo in Malaysia, Indonesia, India, and more. Taitra assists enterprises to expand their career and kicks off mutual cooperation. According to statistics in 2017, there is a steady growth in trade. So far, government-run or state-invested companies have participated in 31 projects. As for small or medium-sized enterprises, they actively draw more buyers and foreign investments, or even aggressively combine the foreign supply chains to increase the market share. With the aid of Taiwan state-owned banks overseas and Taiwan fintech platform, our enterprises receive faster financial support and map out their marketing strategies. Meanwhile, many other institutes are set up to facilitate the southbound promotion. Like overseas business centers or Taiwan, the Association of Taiwanese Enterprises, they, they actively draw more buyers. Next, Thompson will continue. Sure, the new policy should proceed in a talent-based dimension. Taiwan offers subsidies for training second-generation immigrants and also promotes scholastic exchange with southbound nations. Whether they take root in Taiwan or return to their motherland, this will forge faithful alliances with Taiwan import or export trade. Besides, short-term youth exchange projects will bridge industrial lease to take hand-on courses. As a matter of fact, the ITI has sped up recruitment and offered multiple language training programs for personnel. Whether in agricultural innovations, cultural interchange. Biomedical products or green technology, the authority, as a mediator, needs to integrate resources to the utmost benefit. Most of all, be sure to validate more investment protection agreements. Never underestimate the commercial impact Taiwan has made. Soon, Taiwan will be an inseparable partner as well as an influential entity in global economics. Well, Emily. Yes, concerning Islamic economy, it's my honor to share with you this global trend. As Taiwan practiced a relaxed and visa policy, it attracted more tourists here. What's better, cheaper flights and a booming middle class in target nations help boost our domestic tourism. Tourism Bureau had launched a Muslim-friendly project in May 2016. A famous Malaysian TV host and a chef were invited by Taipei Tourism Department to film some Hala-certified delicacies and thus fortify the Taiwan Hala industry. Besides, in April 2017, Taitra set up the, Hala, the Taiwan Hala Center. Till now, there are more than 400 Muslim-friendly stores from foods to cosmetics to biomedical goods. More than 100 restaurants and hotels have been certified by Muslim Friendly Project. The joint effort made by the authorities and private association is worthy. Since it's vital to align with the Islamic economy locally and globally. Next, Grace will conclude our viewpoints as a whole. Grace? Surely, it's the pragmatic southbound policy Taiwan has adopted. It's a realistic approach to co-prosperity in regional economics, even though there's room for filling our economical trade. Beyond creating a friendly environment for diverse races, 
stepping out across borders would be a must. Mobile interchange among southbound target nations would be a trendy navigation and thus uplifts Taiwan's competitivity. Under the leadership of southbound flagship, dynamic Taiwanese will shine our future way and make another miracle. Thank you. As technology improving our means of communication, especially new media, our world has become a global village. With the new media providing an efficient way to communicate with others, our diplomacy has therefore been promoted due to the convenience it brings. As a result, new media is playing an irreplaceable role in affecting the traditional ways of dealing with diplomatic issues. New media are different from newspapers and television programs. They are based on the internet and enable everyone to edit and post. Social media and digital news are examples. They are playing a crucial role in our modern life. A study from England shows that students are spending more than seven hours on social media per day. Obviously, new media has a massive impact on our thoughts and our daily lives. Fun fact, if Facebook is a country, it is going to have the largest population in the world. New media are more convenient. A variety of materials can be accessed at will. This means that we can search for any topics we are interested in via new media. Besides, they allow us to communicate instantly, which enables us to finish our tasks with higher efficiency. What's more, new media are not restricted by the environment. In other words, we can reach people from all over the world and exchange our ideas internationally. Thus, if we can make good use of them, great achievements such as cultural interaction or people-to-people -people diplomacy can be done. Media are meant to convey messages. Our new media have a great power of spreading information. Unlike traditional ones, new media can go much further and wider. This feature makes new media perfect tools for the government to announce policies or information. The official website of Ministry of Foreign Affairs is a good example. The website contains a huge variety of information, including the introduction to Mobile itself, the latest news about diplomacy and the government, policies on issues of MOFA, and even educational information of foreign countries. Those can definitely help citizens in traveling or understanding the government's diplomacies. Besides the main website, with the help of new media, MOFA's advertisements of tourism, trade, and recruitment can gain significant publicity. Another usage of new media is to create a platform not only to provide information, but to share and record important moments. The Instagram page of MOFA has the function. The posts are able to connect us citizens with the government interactively. Besides the government, citizens can also make good use of new media. Some citizens film videos to introduce the beautiful scenery and the special cultures in Taiwan. Due to the publicity brought by the internet, more people who know Taiwan and may be attracted to visit us. For example, MOVA holds an annual filming competition, Trending Taiwan, which encourages teenagers to bring the audience to experience Taiwan in their point of view. The winner of Trending Taiwan in 2016, Fan Ri Kui, traveled around Taiwan to invite random people to do the National Health Aerobics, which is a specific memory shared by a whole generation. This video contains Taiwanese elements which can promote Taiwan's cultures and customs. Through the power of new media, Taiwan is introduced to foreigners. This video has given people who haven't been to Taiwan a quick view of Taiwan's beauty.
To conclude, new media have influenced diplomacy on both official and unofficial aspects. For the official diplomacy, countries are now able to release announcement with more complete information at a more rapid pace. As for the unofficial facet, new media provide a platform for people to gain a huge variety of information. By reinforcing these two aspects on diplomacy, our country will reach a harmonious and promising future with other diplomatic countries. Thank you. Number one, Honorable judges and friends, good morning. If we unplot the map, we can find that Taiwan is a small island which stands on east of Asia. If you ask foreigners, do you know where Taiwan is? They may answer that you mean Taiwan or Thailand. Therefore, if you want to let the people around the world know where Taiwan is, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs certainly plays the most important role. In my opinion, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs is a representative of our country when we interact with others. Then, my teammate will share about the work of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. When it comes to the work of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, to build and remain a good relationship with foreign country is the first thing that comes to our mind. It needs diplomats to do this and promote Taiwan foreign policies. A diplomat is the representative of a country's government in another country. A good diplomat needs strong communication skill, an understanding of governmental relation, and ability to manage complex situation. Often, he is required to provide political information and happenings about his assigned country, which needs time and effort to get. To maintain and expand his relation with the foreign country, he may spend time meeting with local officials, fellow diplomats, business people, journalists, and so on. This certainly requires a great social skill. Then, my teammate will share more details about it. Next, we think that how to improve the image of Taiwan is also the main work that the Ministry of Foreign Affairs should do. For example, the diplomats have to describe Taiwan's threat to the international community to gain its support. Then, we can get more attraction. However, the work of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs is not only about handling the international affairs, but also related to our daily lives. Through the website of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, we can find it provides many services, such as passport services, visa services, document authentication, and emergency assistance to our people abroad. For example, before we want to travel abroad, we can take advantage of the website to realize which country is suitable for travel now. The website uses four different color lines to show the level of danger. Next, my teammate will elaborate more relations about the work of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in our daily lives. In addition to serving our citizens, if foreigners in Taiwan encounter any problems, they can turn to our Ministry of Foreign Affairs for help. Especially, it can provide proper help for them without language boundaries. With the help of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, both our people and foreigners can feel more at ease to enjoy travel overseas and in Taiwan. More importantly, Taiwan has set up more than 100 overseas embassies all over the world. It set up embassies in a foreign country to offer timely and as effective assistance in foreign countries when our people travel, study, or work abroad. They may run into car accidents, robberies, or anything that probably threatens their lives. Therefore, 
The work of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs is related in our daily life tightly. Thank you. Number one, Good morning, honorable judges, ladies and gentlemen. When it comes to MOFA, what comes to mind first? Applying for the passport, taking care of immigrants, representing or protecting our country abroad. Apparently, MOFA handles important issues like diplomacy and negotiations maintaining their relation with other countries and international organizations. Speaking of the diplomacy, we can almost come up with a scenario of diplomats, gathering in a big fancy room and talking about the cooperation projects. However, the ordinary citizens know little about the diplomacy. MOFA sounds like a government agency which serves those who like to go abroad or deal with the foreign publics and the international organizations. Basically, that's what MOFA do for us, right? Well, if that's your impression, then you don't have a complete picture of what MOFA can do for us. So, why don't you tell us? Sure. Everybody seems to think of fancy high level works when it comes to MOFA. They think what MOFA does has nothing to do with us. But, in fact, it's been deeply connected to our daily lives. Besides diplomatic missions, such as conferences or negotiations, MOFA also cooperates with Taiwan citizens to promote, to promote Taiwan's image through cultural or educational activities. For example, a couple weeks ago, a group of experts from the Center for American Progress just came to Taiwan and met the President Tsai. After their official meeting, they also paid a visit to our school and had a talk with us. In fact, our school, in coordination with MOFA, demonstrated that even teenagers like us can have the experience of socializing with foreign experts and help to raise the visibility of Taiwan. Now, Let's have Emily to share with us another example. Thank you. Besides working with school, MOFA also organizes events to promote culture, tourism, technology, and science of our country. Through these activities, our nationals have more chances to know and work with people from all around the world. In late September, Taiwan Design Center signed a memorandum with INDEX, a world-famous creative environmental education system based in Denmark. The memorandum marked a long-term cooperation and effort to raise the awareness among young generations. Under the memorandum, there will be a lot of exchange programs in education in environmental education between both countries. This cooperation will bring us precious opportunities to know how people from all around the world see things from a different angle. Finally, Claudia will make a conclusion. Sure. So, what are the works of MOFA? Officially, MOFA is responsible for promoting the image of our country, maintaining our relations and securing the interests of our people. It sounds like the sales department and public relations of our government, but MOFA does more than these. Oftentimes, they work with government agencies and sometimes even with non-governmental organizations in order to connect Taiwan to global networks. Through different types of collaboration projects, we are seen and appreciated by the world in fields like agriculture, technology, ag 
public health, art and design. The list can go on and on, all thanks to the efforts of MOFA. That's off our speech. Thank you for listening. Number two, So, oh, honorable judges, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. So, the question is, what role can new media play in our efforts in promoting diplomacy? Nowadays, new media is running the world. It's got faster information, wider users, cost savings, and multiple options. It seems that we can't live without new media anymore. All the pictures, videos, and even merchandises all circulates around new media. And the best thing about new media is that it is anytime, everywhere. It is on your computer, on your television, and even on your mobile phone. It is so convenient that it has replaced any other types of old digital medias. In general, new media is a tool for the government to make politic points or to pol publicize politic positions. For example, US President Donald Trump used Twitter to stand for his politic sides or to make politic points. Sometimes, government utilize new media as a weapon. For instance, Russia governments try to manipulate the election of US president by constantly spreading information on Facebook. Politicians in our country are already using new media to promote themselves, such as the mayor of Taipei. Because of his post on social media and his funny videos on the internet, his personality is very well known in our country. New media's power is beyond our imaginations. But what if we use this power to propaganda our country and diplomacy. If we use it wisely, the result can be very effective. As a social media heavy user and a new media creator, I am highly aware that the power of new media is formidable. And I have a little promotion for applying new media on promoting diplomacy. In this generation, people are more likely to receive short or catchy information, rather than redundant words or long lectures. New media such as Instagram is very popular among all people around the world now. It is because Instagram is mainly about posting pictures and short videos, not words. It is all about how delicacy can a content be. In Taiwan, we can also use new media as a tool to promote our characteristic diplomacy and features. But the content needs to be on the chain every time in order to catch people's attention. For example, if we want to promote our beautiful land, we can choose to shoot a short action film to increase the exposure rate and create a hit subject at the same time. Or we can hire a celebrity to sponsor for our country. Even more, we must construct a unique public image on the internet by hiring an artist or specialist to manage our websites and social media. New media is a crucial field that we need to be very good at because it is the future and it is the world. New media is just like our face. Whenever foreigners see information about our country on new media, it's like meeting a person and making first impression by looking at his face. The fact is that we actually have a beautiful face and we need to learn how to promote it and decorate it. Social media play a large part in the new media and in the world. In my opinion, new media need to be especially cared for and even invested by the government. All the creators of new media, such as YouTubers, artists, Internet celebrities can all play a part in promoting diplomacy. In other words, people in this country are all capable of making a difference in promoting diplomacy anywhere, anytime. The highlight of new media is the trend. 
if we can keep up with the trend, then we certainly can attract a lot of international attention. And each one of us will be the diplomat of Taiwan. Thank you. Joining the World Health Organization, or WHO, is a crucial way for Taiwan to get involved in the global network of public health. According to the WHO, the objective of the organization is to allow everyone to attain the highest possible level of health. We can even say that getting medical service is a human right everyone should have. If we join WHO, we can provide and receive medical and technical assistance faster. Also, we can exchange the latest information about the prevention of the epidemic more efficiently. The experience of SARS has told us how important it is to join the organization. In 2003, Taiwan suffered the outbreak of SARS. However, because Taiwan is not a member country of WHO, we fail to gain immediate assistance and knowledge of the epidemic. If Taiwan can join WHO, we can obtain medical as well as technical support. Also, we can exchange the latest medical expertise with other countries more efficiently. Taiwan should join WHO also because we can make substantial contributions to global health. Generally, Taiwan has made four major contributions. First, we provide quality medical services. Forty years ago, Taiwan became the first in Asia to establish a national medical evaluation mechanism. Because the quality of treatment is monitored, the World Health Ranking Survey shows that Taiwan citizens are the second healthiest worldwide. We can confidently say that our medical services have tremendously improved the public health. Second, HiCat is commonly used to assist medical treatment. Many institutions in Taiwan have cutting-edge equipment to offer treatment and prevent diseases. For example, hospitals can provide 24-hour home care through a wireless network monitoring system. Another example is the RFID system, which means radio frequency identification. The system uses radio waves to first identify the patients and then keep track of their medication. This technology ensures the medication safety without violating their privacy. The third contribution of Taiwan is that we can offer medical treatment at reasonable prices. Thanks to the National Health Insurance System, over 99% of Taiwan citizens can benefit from an innovative medical technology and fully trained professional. In 2005, the Nobel Prize winner, Cookman, even stated that the U.S. should learn from Taiwan's success. The last contribution is that Taiwan has been actively participated in providing medical services to other countries. Since Taiwan emphasizes the universal right to receiving medical services, several hospitals have been cooperating with other countries and offering medical assistance. For example, Xinguang Hospital provides a medical system for Palau because it is difficult for the locals to obtain medical resources. So far, 4,000 people have benefited from the system. Taiwan also donated medical supplies and even organized the Palau Action Medical Corps when the dengue fever broke out in 2017. From these examples, we can see Taiwan is prepared to participate in the global healthcare community. So, how can we gain more support in the community of public health? Nowadays, media plays a crucial role in promoting a country's image. For example, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs produced a short film called A Perfect Pair and it describes a story happening in Vietnam. The leading actress is a girl suffering from an abnormal disease when she was faced with the difficult decision of amputation. Some Taiwanese generously donated money so that she could come to Taiwan to undergo operations. In our view, 
it will be very helpful to make documentaries or micro movies like this to gain support. This way, Taiwan's success will be better known to the world. The internet is particularly useful in the global community because it is not limited by time and space. We can even produce videos with foreign language subtitles like Japanese, Spanish, and so on. And language barrier won't be a problem anymore. With our medical contributions in the world and online promotion, we believe Taiwan will gain more opportunities to participate in the global healthcare community. Perching over the tropic of cancer on the Pacific Ocean, Taiwan is blessed with beautiful sceneries and both diverse cultures. But what makes Taiwan stand out is information technology. So if we have a chance to design a three-day Taiwan Day activity overseas, we will unfold it with the exhibit integrating augmented reality and virtual reality. With headset, smartphone, or tablet, such exhibit allows people not only to explore the beauty of Taiwan, but also to interact with the amiable people in Taiwan. For nature lovers, you can take a ride on the Ali Shan Forest Railway with the cherry trees blossoming along the way, and then experience a breathtaking sunrise and sea of clouds. Besides, you can soak up the sun in canteen while enjoying mountains, forests, pasture, lakes, beaches, or sand dunes, everything you want to get up front and personal with the Mother Nature. Or you can check on the Tarko Gorge, appreciating waterfalls streaming down rock and forest, or observing swallows chirping and flying back and forth. And never miss Green Island, where you can go snorkeling with coral reefs and schools of fishes weaving together. Or you can bathe in a rare Zaolu saltwater hot spring with stars twinkling in the sky. For arts and culture enthusiasts, Taipei, a mecca of all lovers of traditional Chinese culture, is highly recommended. You will have a virtual person to guide you while you look at ornate temples which between towering office buildings, high-rise apartments overlooking tower of houses and crafts and antique shops side by side with ultra-modern department stores. So, by means of AR and VR, the beauty of Taiwan will no longer pictures on exhibit, but a kaleidoscope of appealing fields in built with dynamic elements. In addition, there will be clips about the history of Taiwan available, showcasing how democratic and diverse Taiwan is and emphasizing how secure and desirable it is for people to travel in Taiwan. On the following day, we will have another exhibit. However, unlike the previous day, it allows in vision to see and feel. This exhibit will display tangible objects for people to touch or play with. It will be divided into two parts. One is the traditional folk art, such as glove puppetry, oil paper umbrellas, Chinese knots, scented sashes, and spinning tops. The other is the garments and accessories of diverse ethnic groups in Taiwan, inclusive of Holoi, Hakka, Taiwanese aborigines, and those who immigrate from mainland China. With such magnetic objects at hand, people will surely have a lot of fun. Furthermore, each traditional crafts and garments has its unique story behind it. So while people are appreciating it, they can know better about Taiwan's culture. Then, as nightfall, a masquerade will follow. The participants wearing different traditional garments and accessories can bake in relaxed atmosphere, listening to traditional Taiwan folk music, dance happily with original music, or sing Taiwanese pop song delightfully. 
on the last day. Of course, a song for party. We're throwing an outdoor party featuring Taiwanese cuisine, created by food fans around the world. Taiwanese cuisine is the must when promoting Taiwan culture. Thus, we will offer the variety of scrumptious food, such as oyster omelette, stinky tofu, dumpling, mochi, pineapple cake, and pure milk tea. So everyone can eat to their heart's content. To add colors to the party, it will be accompanied by some workshops. Since tourism factories have been successful in Taiwan, it will be a good way to promote Taiwan in the form of small workshops. In the workshops, people are allowed to experience the production processes as well as witness the prosperity and progress of Taiwan. Workshops like making doll figures, ceramic artworks, brewing tea, making soap, or drawing sugar figurines will surely make the participants unforgettable. At the end of the party, we will give everyone a souvenir to show our hospitality. And we strongly recommend a souvenir from National Palace Museum, like Jade Cabbage or Midship Zone, which show the thriving of Taiwan's cultural and creative industry. Then, we will wrap up our activity there. Thank you. Dear judges, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. The following are Taiwan's contribution to global health. First, Taiwan's national health insurance is the best example of the world. We can get med medicine for free or just a little bit money. If we have serious disease like cancer, we can get the med medical treatment at a very low price. Also, we don't need to worry about the quality of the treatment because Taiwan's hospital have many great work team. They always try their best to help patients. Second, Taiwan has great medical technology. Every year, we attract thousands of foreign people coming to Taiwan for the treatment. Furthermore, Taiwan also sent a lot of person in personnel to overseas, such as Asia and Africa. Because of Taiwan's enthusiasm and empathy, we do have saved a lot of lives. Now, let's welcome my teammate Julia to elaborate more. Julia, please. Thank you, Alina. Third, Taiwan's government dedicated to preventing epidemic, which is famous in Asia. Hospital provide vaccination for newborns. The also work is a great dedication for the world to recognize Taiwan's health system. Fourth, Taiwan has the first case in Asia that makes the heart transplantation successful. Taiwan's heart transplantation success. Taiwan's heart protect. Taiwan's transplantation technique is the best in Asia, which makes Taiwan really proud of it. Now, let's welcome my teammate Cello to introduce more. Cello, please. Thank you, Julia. Although Taiwan hasn't joined WHO, we still make efforts to improve our medical and international agreement. Taiwan has good competition in health. A lot of universities in Taiwan have medical departments. The students in this department are a part of the most excellent people in Taiwan. We can use this resource wisely to market Taiwan's education. We are proud of it. For example, government can hold professional speech to invite the medical experts around the world. They can share their opinions of medical, discuss about what they can do for the painful people, and communicate about Taiwan's achievement and contribution in health. Next, welcome my teammate Nora to elaborate and make a conclusion. Nora, please. Thank you, Charlo. Let's the exchange student program pr promoted by New South Bank 
New South Bank policies is another way for Taiwan to participate in, in health care. Exchange students' incredible performances in medical, in medical films could help Taiwan get more attention. The cooperation between Taiwan, Taiwanese students and foreign students could raise their reverence of medical problems in, in the world. Besides, we can share our med medical medical successful medical experiences with others. I think there will be a win-win situation. To sum up, with this collaboration and participation, therefore, Taiwan, Taiwan is not only an island, island but also a brilliant land. Thank, Thank you. you. Honorable judges, dear teachers and fellow students, good morning. I'm Kelly. In modern times, I think new media plays a crucial role as a civil diplomat in promoting diplomacy. Opposite to old media, such as television, radio, and print media, new media including blogs, social media, online news outlets, and network platforms have shortened the distance among people all over the world so that people can interact with each other anytime and anywhere. In this way, new media is a desirable tool to raise a nation's visibility. Meanwhile, diplomatic policies are accessible by people around the world in no time. For example, YouTube is an effective tool to achieve this goal with microfilms or videos. On top of that, such social medias as Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter all serve the purpose of platform to express opinion and promote diplomacy, either with words or with pictures. This kind of digital diplomacy has become a new trend, which features civil participation rather than official propaganda, impressing people both at home and abroad. Next, my teammate will elaborate this point and continue with more. My friends, my name is Fabiola. As mentioned above, digital diplomacy is becoming a more and more important tool to promote diplomacy. Take microfilms as an example. Ma Inkjo office once uploaded a microfilm, National Flag Girl to YouTube, successfully exposing the flag of the Republic of China worldwide. It is a romance between a Taiwanese boy who loves traveling with the ROC national flag and a hybrid girl who returns to her motherland, Taiwan, for the first time. Wrapped in a love story, the microfilm attracts several hundred thousand paid views, not only inspiring patriotism, but also exposing the ROC national flag to people around the world. Short video clips are also effective. Our Ministry of Foreign Affairs opened the Trending Taiwan Channel to introduce the diverse and intriguing aspects of Taiwan. Since it was set up in 2015, Trending Taiwan has created over 500 videos, among which Second Chance is a successful example. It is a true story of a foreign young girl who received a liver transplant at 13 months old, thanks to Taiwan's compassion and medical magic. With the video available on the internet, the video shows to the world that Taiwan is a hub of cutting-edge medical technology and a major donor of international assistance. Next, my teammate, Winnie, will give more examples. Hello, everyone. In addition to the above examples about new media, there are examples of other countries. U.S. Embassy in Norway in December 2015 was uploaded a video clip Americans try Norwegian Christmas food. In the video, we can see various reactions as staff at the U.S. Embassy try traditional Norwegian Christmas dishes, such as sheep's head. Apparently, 
This video was meant to wish Norwegians happy holiday, but in fact, it impressed not only on Norwegian people, but also on everyone who wanted a positive image of American embassy and government. Social networking websites like Facebook and Twitter also play a vital role in digital diplomacy. During 2017 Summer Universiate, Netherlands Trade and Investment Office posted several pictures of water polo players showing off their muscular figures on Facebook, which attracted more than 10,000 likes and follows in an instant, thanks to the internet and eye-catching pictures. In a quite short time, Netherlands Trade and Investment Office caught incredible attention and raised visibility. Next, my teammate will make a conclusion. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Madeline. Diplomacy is not an easy thing, but an art that makes the impossible possible. Especially in a tough time when Taiwan is faced with difficult diplomatic adversity. We should make good use of new media to break through it. We can use various new media like microfilms, videos, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to promote Taiwan anytime and anywhere. We can shoot videos to introduce diverse aspects of Taiwan, such as national flag, economic growth, medical technology, and so on. We can post pictures of Taiwanese food and athletes to catch international attention. In fact, new media makes it possible to build a positive Taiwan image and let more people recognize Taiwan. I think new media will definitely shed light on the future of our diplomacy. Thanks for your attention. What a morning, right? 19 speeches back to back. So you can imagine how difficult it is to be a judge for such a competitive contest. We really had a hard time deciding on the winners this time. However, I think the judges agree with me that other than some tough decision-making moments, we actually enjoy sitting through the whole morning here. And I personally, was quite impressed and inspired. Impressed by some of the uh, great presentational techniques that you employed in your speeches, and inspired by some creative ideas that you share about the new southbound policy, about Taiwan's uh, contribution to the international arena, and also about how to promote Taiwan using new media. So I want to thank you, contestants. I think you are all winners. <laughs> this may sound like a cliche, but this is from the bottom of my heart. I want to congratulate everybody for making such hard efforts and enter this stage of the competition. But if you don't get selected, please don't blame me. <laughs> and don't blame yourselves either, because they only open six slots. OK, as a judge, I think I'm also obligated to give you some comments on how to make more effective speeches. I have three points to make. I'll make it brief, okay? The first one is about stage movement. We know that this is a little bit different from a speech contest because this is a group presentation. Therefore, all the groups tried very hard to show dynamics, to show cooperation and team spirits to the judges, okay? Sometimes I think you overdid it, okay? Like the gesture uh, situation yesterday, Professor Chen mentioned. Today, I want to talk about, um, you know, the group members switching positions. Um, I would like to suggest that please don't make disturbing or unnecessary movements on stage. Dis disturbing like when one speaker, before one speaker finishes his or her talk, another speaker will step up to the center of the stage. Well, for me, it's a little bit dis disturbing, okay? Another one is unnecessary movement. If you can come to the, f the center point, uh, 
in a very fast and easy way, then why, why not do that instead of circling around the stage? Okay, so this is something for you to consider. And then the second point I want to address is introduction. Um, you know, all know that introduction is a very important point in terms of speech preparation because introduction serves to attract attention. It also serves to introduce the macro structure, macro structure, the outline of your speech. And also, a good beginning is halfway done. We all know that, okay? However, in today's presentations, I noticed that most teams, most teams did not really have a very impressive introduction. And you know that introduction has its structures too. It usually begins with an attention getter to serve its first function, of course, and then ends with a thesis statement to introduce the outline. In between, we have a bridge, okay? Attention getter is a lot of, uh, uh, is something that people can work on, okay? You can use things like telling a personal experience about a topic or uh, retell a compelling story, even using quotations, making references to some famous or important historical events. These are the various ways for you to start your introduction to get attention from your audience and, and soften up the topic a little bit rather than go into the topic right away, okay? So I think that's something we can work on. And then the last point I want to mention is uh, passion, okay? I think I also mentioned that last year, but under the strong request from one of our judges, well, this is what the students are lacking. We have to re-emphasize it. Okay, by passion, I mean, we have to think about how to relate ourselves, speakers, to our topic. People talk about the importance of relating the topic to your audience. Yes, I agree, it's very, very important, but I think it's equally important to relate yourself to the topic. Well, what do I mean by that? To relate yourself or to connect yourself to your topic actually means you are truly caring about the subject matter that you're talking about. And you truly believe, believe in the ideas you're sharing with the audience. Okay, why? Because only when you show your genuine concern about a topic, then will you make extra efforts to dig into the topic and try to build greater depth, depth and breadth uh, into the topic. And also, only then can you allow your emotions to flow naturally through words. And emotions, passo, according to Aristotle, is the most powerful tool to persuade and to help people to memorize your, uh, to remember your message. Okay, so I think that's, uh, that's very important. We have to show that we are really, uh, what's our real passion, express our passion through words. If we really understand the importance of our issue to ourselves as a speaker. Okay, and then how to do that? Also, there are several ways, okay? Telling stories is one way, just like uh, it is in the introduction. And also, we can make comparison and contrast, making something that's abstract or complicated and compare it to something simple and easy so your audience can understand. And also, finally, of course, I think statistics is also very important. Statistics can help us make our information trustworthy and build speakers' credibility. And that will, in turn, generate very positive responses from your audience. Okay, I think uh, Professor Chen, no. <laughs> okay, Professor Lee, sorry. Uh, we have a lot to share too, okay? So for me, I think, think about the stage movement, okay? Uh, work on your introduction and think how can you really build in your passion through your words and delivery if you take into consideration of these aspects, your speech performance will improve. Thank you. 
Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. So nice to see you. How are you doing today? Good or bad? Okay, I want you to tell your neighbor, you know, on your right, on your left. Tell him, tell her, you are great. Come on. You are great, okay? And another one, say thank you. Come on, say thank you. <laughs> I hope that you enjoy this two days competition. That's marvelous. Okay, however, I'm going to really just tell you something about what I found during the two day sessions. I'm going to focus on several things, okay? Number one is the attention gather. So how do you start your speech? How do you start this kind of what, you know, practice? The second one, I also want to talk about passion. What kind of passion do you need? And the third one, I want to mention something about the action. And then the next one, some idea about learning. And the last one, it's about how you are going to really do something to realize your dream. That will be the wheel. So the first one, you know, whenever you are giving a speech, right, you want to get the attention of your audience. Sometimes you need to use a lot of surprises. I didn't really see a lot of surprises, right? For example, if I say, hey, you know, hey, 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 young man, I wish you all to die young. How do you feel? Good or bad? Oh, you know, God, Jimmy, how can you curse us? We didn't really do anything to offend you, right? How did you say, how could you say, you know, I wish you all to die young? But you know, when I just say that, you will be surprised. Your attention was caught. And then I would say, you know, I wish you all to die young at the age of 100. Now, how do you feel? You feel, wow, if I could live to my 100, I'm still young. That was marvelous. So you try to really attract the attention by using quotation, by using story, by using some term that people couldn't really imagine. This is the first thing you have to know. Try to do this kind of thing, and things will be very different. Why? Because when you just have the attention, right? And then now you can really use a not important skill, that's passion. So what does it mean by passion? So look at my eyes. You know, if you can see the glitter. So a lot of you, when you were here, you were giving speech, right? You were standing here very still. You know, you were just performing some, just what? Some actually mechanical drill. That's not good. So whenever you are talking, right, you want to make it very natural. It's just like a kind of, kind of you know, conversation. So you want, to be, you want people to see your passion. Why? Because when you just have the passion, that means you believe it. I believe that Taiwan is going to create something. We are going to make an impact. We don't just want to make an impression. But just also remember, sometimes people say, hey, make an impact. Don't make an impression. But I want to say, you have to make an impression, and then you can make an impact. Try to show people your passion. People will be convinced. This is the second thing you have to know. The third one is action. You know, it's not really very easy for anyone to stand up on the stage to deliver some, some speech, right? Some of you forget the line. You know, it's not really, well, very uncommon. Everybody forgets something, sometime. However, don't treat it as a kind of failure. You know, you see here the word F-A-I-L, what does it mean? That means first attempt in life. First attempt in life. So when you try, you fail, it does not mean you are going to fail forever. So this is the foundation stone for you to step into the future. So just what? Well, don't feel sad, don't feel well upset. No, no, if you win the prize, congratulations. If you don't, you win the lesson. That's another kind of prize I want you to take back home with your joy. This is something. And also remember, action includes practice. Therefore, in your speech, and I didn't really just hear a lot of repetition. Remember Martin Luther King, his famous speech, I, well, I have a dream speech, right? He repeatedly used the term, I have a dream, I have a dream, I have a dream. And then people remember, I have a dream. People don't fall asleep down there. They join the speaker to have the dream. Therefore, you see now, actually, if you are talking about the African American, the staters in the United States, it's getting much better than they had in 1960s. So try to remember 
to repeat some of the important lines in your speech. And also remember, don't think Martin Luther King, he just gave this speech. I have a dream speech. Just, you know, at that time, the first time. No, no, no. Before he gave this I have a dream speech, he actually had given for more than 2,500 other speeches. What do you mean? Practice. Practice. Practice until you do not really know you are practicing. That's it. And then the next one is clincher. How do you clinch the whole thing? How do you really just get the audience to do something to follow your cause? If you want to persuade the world, need to welcome their arm to Taiwan, right? How are we going to say something? A lot of you, actually, when you were just giving the talk, right? I didn't really hear a lot of this kind of clincher. So next time, when you conclude your speech, you try to get something to conclude the whole thing by getting the people to take actions. This is also very, very important. When you have passion, when you have this kind of thing, and actually, no matter where you want to go, you want to go to southbound, you want to go northbound, you want to go Jamesbound, <laughs> you can become Jamesbound, okay? It doesn't matter. You know, when people can feel your passion, that will be something. And the next one is learning. I remember, Michelangelo. Anyone knows Michelangelo? Okay, so maybe you don't know his English name, Chinese name, Michelangelo. Remember, right? Okay, so I remember there was a very famous story about Michelangelo. When he was 72, he was assigned by the Pope to be the chief architect of St. Peter Basilica. You know, if you go to Italy, St. Peter Basilica, that's the, you know, actually the most amazing church in the whole world. He was given this kind of assignment to embellish the church with his carving, with his scap you know, scap you know, sculpture, and all the other things. He was serving there faithfully to make the church a beautiful one, a, an amazing one. And then when he had served there for like, you know, 18 years, he was very old. He was about like what, 90, 89. Okay, he knew he was about to die. He asked his servants, his disciples, to carry him to the church. He was almost blind. He was using his hand to touch all the carvings, all the masterpieces, all the great words. And he said, I still learn. I still learn. So students, learning is a kind of continuous process. No matter how old you are, no matter how young you are, you try to learn all the time. Use the social media wisely. Don't just use it for Facebook, Line, Instagram. Use them to educate yourself to be better. The last one, conclusion. You're happy now, right? <laughs> I remember when JFK was the president of the United States, on September 12, 1992, 1962, I'm sorry, not 1992, you know, he died in 1992, okay. On September 12, 1962, okay, I, when I was two years old, and then he was giving a very famous moon talk. So if you check the internet, you know that was a very famous one, moon talk. He went to Rice University, he, he gave this kind of moon talk speech. 1962, it was not really the time for a human being to first step on the moon. The time was 1969. But 1962, when the United States didn't really have anything, and he said, we didn't even know, we didn't even have this kind of alloy, the material, which could really just endure the heat in this kind of atmosphere. We didn't really have this kind of rocket. We couldn't really just what, have all the things. But let me tell you, we are going to the moon, 1962. A lot of advisors, a lot of people, a lot of government officials, they just asking, hey, you know, President Kennedy, how can you be sure that we are able to go to the moon? Kennedy, he just gave all the people 
five words. I also hope that all of you can remember the five words. He said, the will to do it. The will to do it. So today, that's a nice experience for you, for me. When I look down here, I see the future. When you look at me up here, what do you see? History? No, 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 don't say history. Okay. When you look at me here, right, you also see the future. We are all the future of our country. We are all the future of all humankind. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank Thank Xuhao 需要十五 序號三十二，桃園市正生高級中學。好，那麼以上是十隊表現優良的學校名單哈。那接下來呢，我們要進入啊，有六隊進入到決選的名單哈。首先是序號一，崇光女子高級中學。第二隊序號十建國高級中學第三隊這種地主隊五林高級中學第四隊第四隊政治大學附屬高級中學第五隊台北市維格高級中學這個壓軸的一隊哈台北市復興實驗高級中學好恭喜以上這樣的學校好謝謝